so we finally got underway now, um, a little bit later than I expected, but then uh, things took a bit longer to sort out than I imagine but anyway um, over here we've got the lights of in the distance there the lights of the lighthouse of San Carlos up the uh, up among the shadows there the channel leading up to it and over here we've got the flashing light which is the channel marker for that channel and this way we're passing the village fishing village uh, from which probably came the guy who came by for Camarones this afternoon. <laughs> he was very friendly. David was his name. David, he says. I am a David. <laughs> so we're on our way southish. Well, we're heading out of the bay first, which is initially south, southeast actually. Um, and then we'll be heading more south once we've gone out of the entrance, which is a few miles away. So it will take a little bit of time. Um, one problem I had with the anchor getting it up was all fine actually, but I just could not fit the pin in place, which is uh, not good news. So I'm holding on the windlass, which is even worse news. I shouldn't be doing that, but um, yeah, we'll see what we can do in the daylight tomorrow. Um, the other thing is I've got the main up. Wow, we've actually got the sail up. Because I think later in the passage we are going to get strong enough winds to be able to sail. So uh, I've got to set the uh, wind to sail up ready. So that's a that's a, uh, a bonus, and uh, very happy with that. So we're underway. Six and a half knots on the motor. There is a ten knot wind from the north, but of course we're heading south, so that makes it effectively less than five, which is not really much use for any any sailing. So there we go, we're back underway and heading towards Cabo San Lucas at the bottom end, the south end of the Baja Peninsula in Mexico and then around to San Jose del Cabo. Well it's pretty well one in the morning and um, I did actually go back to the windlass, to the anchor and I lashed it in place. Uh, because it occurred to me that it was way better to do that now while I'm in calm waters than wait till tomorrow morning when there could be a probably a, a big swell. And anyway, it's um, obviously the anchor should not be left uh, without a pin or without being tied down. Uh, it's not good. And I was able to get, therefore, to turn off the windlass, which is also pretty important not to leave it um, under tension. So I'm um, happy with that. And the other thing was I found that the main sheet was uh, slightly trapped. Um, so I just spent a little bit of time sorting that out. So uh, the main sheet uh, is fine. And otherwise, nothing much more to report. Very calm, very quiet. Um, I'm heading out towards the entrance to the bay via Magdalena. And then I'll turn around once I've been outside. I'll be able to head more. I'm heading pretty much due south at the moment to get out of the entrance. And then I'll be able to head southeast to head down towards Cabo San Lucas. A very distinctive white flashing light at the entrance to the bay here. It's um, pretty bright and certainly not to mistake, be mistaken. It's on a um, quite a relatively high promontory, not as high as the rocks that we, or the uh, cliffs that we saw uh, coming in in the morning yesterday, but um, big enough not to miss it. But at night, of course, without the moon up, uh, it's really important to have a, a light flashing It's the Punta Redonda light down on the east side of the entrance that we were looking at flashing just then. It's showing two white flashes every five seconds and uh, has a range supposedly of well over two miles. And it's half past one in the morning now. Uh, there's a, it looks as though the moon is getting up. We're seeing a bit of moonlight uh, in the gaps between the clouds. And it's still getting that very bright flashing light. We've just passed it and as soon as we've got out into the open water, Noticeably, the swell is a lot, lot higher. I mean, there was a few or nothing in the bay. Uh, once you got away from the entrance, not at all, which is very, very, very nice for anchoring. Uh, but now we're out into the, into the ocean. We are definitely. 
coming up to 7 in the morning and you can just see the outline of uh, the mountains around Mag uh, Bahia Magdalena astern of us and the wind is up a little bit and here we have the uh, hint of a dawn obviously with all that cloud we're not going to see a lot so that's about the most we're going to see we're heading southeast. Wonderful! We're actually sailing at last with the engine off. First time all the way down. Absolutely lovely. So much more peaceful. And we're making about five and a half knots. So not quite as not quite as much as I'd like, but five and a half fine for the moment. The wind swung around a little bit uh, more offshore and so the Genoa is filled, which it wasn't earlier. Just about filled, it's just uh, keeping us going. So this is lovely. I am enjoying this. I'm sitting here with my coffee, just enjoying the... So I just checked the uh, predict wind forecast for the area and um, you can see the good wind that we're in at the moment where the white spot is is where our present position is and then as we go down it looks as though we'll be keeping good wind hopefully fingers crossed it's certainly looking very optimistic and um, of course around most capes you do get a kind of a cape effect the wind increases so uh, we'll have to be ready for that but it'll be great it'll be behind us but then as we come around Ca uh, Cabo San Lucas, it, we end up in a wind shadow to the south of the um, Baja Peninsula, total blue, nothing at all by way of wind. So we'll be back into motoring. But that'll be by uh, tomorrow morning. This is absolu absolutely glorious. We're still sailing along uh, the sea in following seas. Uh, we're, in other words, going, we're going downwind anyway, and the seas are coming from astern, and we're just sailing smoothly under full canvas. It's absolutely wonderful. I'm feeling really, really relaxed and happy with this. So here we've got the sea state. is not completely happy because uh, the wind has uh, changed now and we're more dead downwind than we were before but hopefully that will change and we're still making a reasonable speed of around five knots. Of course the thing to notice is that I'm not in my t-shirts and shorts yet. I'm actually in quite warm clothing and uh, with a little bit of wind uh, the temperature is only about 21-22 centigrade which is roughly 70 Fahrenheit. So it's uh, not too bad, but I'm still happy to wear my warm gear. Well, we're making a very good speed now, and the wind is 14 knots apparent from astern, and we're making six to seven knots, so obviously it's around the 20 mark. And it just occurred to me I should put my wind generator on. The super wind is a very good generator. Puts in a lot of power without a lot of noise. Um, in addition, of course, to my solar panels there. And I spent a bit of time, but I think it was worthwhile because we're now using. Let me just get myself sorted out here. And going very nicely, thank you. <laughs> so, no problem. We're going so dead down here. In fact, slightly on the line of ear. past five on Monday afternoon local time and um, the sun as you can see is clearly about to set. The waves have uh, built up a lot because of the strong wind. We've got 20 knots of wind and uh, so we're making good speed 
we're still more or less swing on wing, although the uh, generator is quite so short, of this, so it can manage that. We'll see how long we can keep it going. And we're heading down, we're about 48 miles or well under 50 miles from Calva San Lucas now. And um, really being swung around by these seas. <laughs> being taken now. Yeah, we're kind of regularly surfing on the uh, seas that are coming by. The swell that is taking us with it. Anyway, we've had a, had a good sail, finally. And it looks as though this wind will stay all the way down to Cabo San Lucas. So that's excellent. Once we get around the corner, it still looks as though that blue, dead calm patch of wind shadow will be there so we might have to start end up with motoring but at least we've had a good sail in the meantime as you can see we're being swung around quite a lot by these seas they're a good two meters or more uh, maybe i think they're probably about two and a half meters actually they're pretty big definitely built up over the afternoon with this lovely strong wind I'm just going to go and get some food organised while it's still daytime. Always nice to get that done in the daylight. Watch the sun disappear as it sets. really cleared up actually uh, over the afternoon and we've got almost no cloud, maybe 10% bit of blue sky overhead. Well it's 10 to 8, or is it 10 to 9, whichever, 10 to 8 I think, yeah 10 to 8. Well it's 10 to 8 on uh, Monday evening. And uh, having made that rather pleasant sunset video, uh, I suddenly saw that the wind was actually getting up to 25 knots. And I thought, oh my gosh, I better get a reef in. Trouble is, I couldn't get the reef in. It just proved impossible. I ended up fighting um, two different reefs actually. And uh, I got the, eventually got the second reef in and I pulled the uh, sail down ready for a third reef, but I can't, uh, the, the leech is just not uh, tensioning. Neither of the lines on the first and third reef seem to want to tighten. So the, the sail uh, leech is uh, flapping about. Uh, so in the meantime, here I am trying to fight the, uh, the system, the, because uh, if you think about it, I mean, I've not really sailed this boat since I got back in 2019 in September. <laughs> so um, I've been doing a lot of other things, but I've not actually sailed the boat. And I've certainly not checked, uh, you know, checked it by way of sailing it in gentle conditions that everything works. Um, I am soaking wet. The seas got up really, really rough and uh, kept washing over into the cockpit and I'm, I was right in the way every time. So my, I'm so pleased actually that I didn't wash my hair yesterday with the hot water of thinking I should do that maybe. And I didn't do that because it's full of salt now, it's full of seawater. Um, and my jacket and my trousers, everything is soaking wet. I'm going to have to change. Um, so it's been quite a time. I mean, 10 to 8 since what? Half past five? It's been a long time, I tell you. It's been such a long time on, on in the cockpit, and then with lots of trips up to the uh, up to the mast to try and figure out why the lines weren't running, why they weren't moving. Uh, in pretty in the of course by now it was total dark, so my headlamp was very very useful. It's nice to film that in my pocket. Um, anyway, so it's been a bit of a nightmare to say the least. <laughs> 
and uh, I'm just uh, resting now. I've turned us downwind now, which is what we should be if we want to make Cabo San Lucas. Uh, we were headed pretty well inshore because that was, um, I you know, in, in order to try and get the reefs in, obviously I had to try and head us more upwind to relieve the stress on the, um, the tension on the, sail on the sailcloth. So, um, anyway, I think now I am about ready for a little bit of rest and relaxation and um, we'll have a look and see what the situation is tomorrow. It feels so much better now I've turned down wind. It's just amazing, isn't it? How when you've got the wind beam onto the and the waves coming in onto the uh, boat, be, uh, onto the beam as well, uh, how rough it is compared with going downwind. I mean, suddenly everything's smooth and gentle and quieter. <laughs> it's just amazing. Anyway, so that's what we're doing at the moment. Um, I'd like to uh, adjust our course a little bit more. But if I do that, I might find that I've um, got a problem because we're almost dead downwind at the moment. Not quite. We've just got the wind um, coming over the port quarter. And so uh, the sails are roughly okay. I've re reduced the genoa a bit as well. And um, I've still got the main on the uh, on the preventer to make sure that doesn't suddenly swing over. So we'll see how things go. We'll just keep an eye on things over the next hour or so and see what happens. Anyway, all's well that ends well. I, well, I can't see it's ended well because the, uh, the, the mainsail is in total chaos. But, um, you know, at least we're sailing. We're making five and a half, six knots. And we've got a wind from a stern of 16 knots. So clearly we've still got 20 knots of wind from a stern, actual true wind. So yeah, there we go. We're, we're gonna have to get out sailing in gentle conditions and make sure that all the lines work properly. <laughs> this was not fun. Oh dear. Anyway, just take it bit by bit, you know, things will pass, everything happens, but uh, they will, can't, you know, you, you get over it, you get through it, and uh, things work out. So there we go. Have a good night, everyone. I'm going to rest and relax and maybe get some food. Well, it's three in the morning and I've just started the engine. Uh, we were down to about um, three and a half, three knots. The wind has gone, has died completely down to roughly seven, seven knots or so. Anyway, I've got a noise, I've got to see what that Damn is. Damn it, that's the overheat alarm on the engine. I'll have to go down and see what's going on with the water. Oh, well, that's pretty bad news, because um, the wind is dying and it's going to die even more. And we've got, what, about five, six knots of wind at the moment. We're making three knots, if we're lucky. Um, we're in deep water. We're coming into Cabo San Lucas. It's uh, five miles away. I'm looking through the uh, rather wet windscreen from the rough weather we had yesterday. So, um, you know, we're keeping going for the moment, but I need to get to check the impeller to see why I've got the overheat. Uh, I might have to do that now rather than wait. Uh, because uh, if the wind dies completely, which it's predicted to, then um, we're just going to go slower and slower and never get anywhere. Okay, not very good. Three o'clock in the morning. Well, I started up the little gen set and that ran for all of five minutes before it decided that it also had a, a temperature problem, which means maybe it's not getting cooling water as well. So I've had to, uh, it, well, it turned itself off and it won't go again. And uh, the batteries are low. 20% where well, they went up a little bit with the running the engine before I had to stop that because of the overheat problem. So I'm about to raise, I've put out all the Genoa and I'm about to raise a little bit more of the mainsail and then I must get down to the main engine impeller to see whether or not that's the problem, whether that's gone again and uh, change that. I've got another one, I'll have to find that but first I'll have to have a look and see whether the um, impeller is damaged if that's the problem okay so uh not a very happy arrival at we're five miles from Cabo san lucas i can see the lights clearly as you saw before i can see those in the distance um so we're trying to make for there 
and hope the wind doesn't die completely so at least we can keep going. Well I tried to let out the, the second reef is out but I tried to let out the first reef to get full mained and um, it doesn't seem to want to know so there's a problem with that uh, somewhere along the line with that. Uh, I don't know quite what it is but I've, you know, I just wanted to get as much of the sail up as I could. We're making uh, what 3.8, well, around 4 knots I think which isn't too bad so if we can keep that going then that will be fine. Well, for the moment, it would be nice to go faster, but four knots of deep is, uh, I'm happy with that for the moment. Okay, so I think it's time for me to get down to the, um, I don't, did I mention the gen set stopped? I ran the gen set and that lasted all the five minutes. It's got, also got an overheat problem. Anyway, so now we're going to uh, get hold, get the uh, main companionway steps out of the way and get to the engine impeller and see what the problem is there, see if I need to change that. Here we have the... Uh a replacement impeller in here uh, safely all seems to be there so we'll um, now get these steps out of the way so I can get into the engine and I should add it is now uh, just coming up to four o'clock a few minutes before four o'clock and there's a beautiful crescent moon overhead I mean it's a lovely night almost no 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 cloud at all very very nice if this weren't all going on i'd be really enjoying I'm it i'm not very happy at seeing so much oil beneath the engine there shouldn't be any um i will check the dipstick again because i checked that we uh very, oh, just the other day and it was fine yeah in, in back uh Bahia magdalena i checked it and the oil was fine but i will check that again but that is it shouldn't be happening anyway so here's the uh, impeller um housing that I'm going to have to get to just undo those nuts now. It did occur to me just in time before I started loosening those little nuts that uh, turning off the seacock for the raw water inlet was a very good idea. Well the impeller doesn't look too bad actually, it looks fine and uh, I'll just have a little clean around in there and put the new one in anyway um, and I just wonder whether the pump is okay water's obviously getting through so if the impeller's not damaged it looks a bit dry in places i just wonder if it's turning so maybe the pump is the problem oh well we'll just keep on change the impeller and uh, try the motor again 25 past five in the morning and it's all back together again didn't look as though there was any major problem there so that's a bit worrying um, but we'll start the engine and see how we go. Just open up the seacock and start up the engine. Way it's now five to six, and uh, Disney Wonder is coming in to anchor, and we're just rounding Cabo Falso at Cabo uh, at uh, San Lucas, Cabo San Lucas. So um, yeah, we're trying to head fairly quickly if we can while the engine is not overheating uh, trying to get underway towards San Jose del Cargo which is still a, a little bit away so uh, the present waypoint is three miles away and I think we've got still a distance to go to get to where we want to get to up there. So not too far but far enough where the engine's misbehaving. We have the bright lights in the distance there of uh, Disney Wonder coming to anchor in Cabo San Lucas and here we have Cabo San Lucas, Cabo Falso and then going on, on around to the town which is uh, just around slightly there and then on towards uh, uh, San Jose del Cabo. Right now, Disney uh, Wonder is just overtaking on our starboard side, and uh, there's another cruise ship in the anchorage in, uh, in Cabo San Lucas as we come on by. 
and near to us you can see the rocks among which is the famous arch, the natural arch in the rocks everyone comes to see. So at the moment the uh, heating seems to be okay. Keep my fingers crossed on that. There's Jose Cat at uh, Cabo, the famous rocks um, outside on the uh, outside of the Cabo San Lucas. And here we have Disney Wonder. It took us about three hours to get to San Jose del Cabo. The wind has died right down to well under 10 knots from the north west, which means that, uh, well, from the north actually, and that means it would be heading us if we were trying to sail. That's our route, just uh, northeast up the coast now. Sunshine comes through the window. Need to good clean from all the seawater it got splashing on it the other night. There we go, take off seven hours from that. It's nearly 14, so nearly seven o'clock. Well, I came to the boom end to try and find out why I had such a problem with two of these reefing lines and it quickly became quite clear two different reasons or one on each line why i had such a problem why they would not move at all last night and the one um, is jammed underneath the shackle that's on the out hall for the foot of the sail completely unable to move anywhere and that is my third reef line the second reef is fine and then looking at the green line here, I realized that the stack pack zipper, the actual zipper itself has a white end on it to pull it along. And that has got jammed around the block that the green line is running on. So it was completely unable to turn. The block will not turn, the sheave will not turn. And therefore, I've got to get this white line out from within here to let this line run. So again, the green line, which is um, my reef number one, and the, this line are completely unable to move on the sheave because the sheaves, well, but the one sheave is blocked and then the other one, the line was trapped underneath this shackle here. So now I can see what the problem is. Now I know why I had such a big problem last night because of course in the dark it's not so easy to see what's going on. Anyway, uh, we survived it all last night. It was pretty horrible but now I can try and fix the problem. Here we are in the, coming into the marina in San Jose del Cabo. It's a little bit shallow so you have to be careful to follow the markers.
us keep an eye on your depths, as always. Passing the big hotel on the right. Interestingly, the dock here, the fuel dock, is not run by the marina. I thought I was going to come and fuel up and then go to the um, and go to my slip. Um, but it turns out they don't have a, uh, a radio. You have to make a reservation in advance to go and fuel up there. So I'll do that on my way out. So I thought I was going to do it on my way in. A lot of sports fisher boats here. So we just checked into the office, uh, had a golf cart bring me here and he's going to take me back because it's a long way around. We're right on the opposite side of the marina and uh, yeah, it's a, a long way to come around walking. It's good if you need the exercise though. Well, we are in the desert, so uh, they put in plenty of desert plantings here, which is quite nice to see rather than try to waste a lot of water that they don't have a lot of. They've uh, made good use of the nature of the local plants. He is amazing. Clearly made for an arid place. Fantastic. Here's my transport to take me back.